I forgot my white tights too, so I'm sorry to disappoint you guys. What's more, my, my topic is going to be perhaps slightly less about saving the world and building great houses, but maybe more about building trust in general that will help us build houses in the end that save the world. Uh, all of us are surrounded by networks today. We see them everywhere. One of them is actually has brought us together today here. And um, these networks really bring the question whether are they a sort of recipe for trust and what trust is all about. Now, to me, trust is really the big issue in everything we do, whether it be business collaboration or any other type of collaboration. If you think about it, before you start thinking about being creative, before you start talking about what we can do together, you really think whether we can trust each other. Now, we think about whether we can trust the products we use, and sorry for that maybe little mean example of products we stop trusting, but trust is really, really important. We think about the companies we work together with, and even great big companies, when they lose their tr the trust, the, the goodwill they have, stop being great big companies even if the courts prove them right in the end. That was the case for Anderson. They didn't do anything wrong with Enron, apparently, yet they disappeared as a company because their clients stopped trusting them. And as it is in business, if you don't have the trust, you don't have the clients. And it's also about the people. Now, that gentleman has already been mentioned today, but I think he's a good example of someone a lot of people trusted and ended up uh, stopping uh, to trust. So, trust is really the foundation of anything we do, especially in business, and I come from the business world. As I said, without trust, you cannot sell a product, you cannot do a business, you cannot convince people to do business with you. And that's why it's so impor important to find efficient ways of building trust. That might seem less obvious to people who are not in the business world, because you don't think about trust and efficiency in one sentence. You would say, hey, trust is a long-term process. It's something you need to really breed over a long period of time. But that's not how business works. In business, you want to do business together really fast, but trust is the biggest, or lack of trust is the biggest barrier you encounter. You encounter. So you're, li you're really looking for ways to build that trust fast. And surprising or not, networks are the easiest and the best way of building trust because they bring people who don't know each other together. They show them stuff that brings them together, common values, common um, interests, common uh, purposes, and they encourage them to build a sort of little trust around that and then go deeper and deeper and deeper and trust each other. I'm pretty sure all of you, if they bump into each other in 20 years' time or 10 years' time or five months and realize that they've both been to a TEDx event, are going, to have, are going to start feeling more trust than they did a minute before. Even though you're just in one room, you're just listening to one or 20 presentations today, you've not done anything together, but the simple fact that you notice these common grounds is going to help you build trust, which is so crucial in business, but not only business. And networks are actually the best way of efficiently building trust, quickly building trust. But you need to follow certain rules in that. And you've seen plenty of networks around. You've probably been in millions of networks, whether they be online or offline. I'm not sure if you're still in all of them. Probably not. I'm not sure if you were satisfied with the experience. Probably not. And I probably know why, uh, although my recipe is not an ideal one. There's a couple of stuff you need to follow if you want to build an effective network. One, it needs to be a peer network. If you put two more too much hierarchy, and again, TED is a great example, in a network, uh, it stops working because it's just a way of, it's a pyramid. It's not, it's not a true network. A network works only if it's people who feel that they can relate, who feel that they're on, on par, on the same, roughly on the same level. So should you ever build a network, make sure you bring peers together and not different people, people that are too, too, too different. The second thing is networks need to have a long-term goal. It's not, especially in business, they shouldn't be deal-driven. If you bring people in a network and you tell them, do business together fast, that's a marketplace. That's not a network. That's not something that should work in the long run. So that's why you need to make sure that if you ever build a network, the goals are long-term, you get to know each other first, and then you start doing business together, not the other way around. And the third thing, and that's 
maybe not going to be the most politically correct of statements, but networks need to be homogenic. Of course diversity is good, and of course diversity brings you know, different ideas in one room, which couldn't happen if the people in the room were too similar to each other. On the other hand, in a network, if you wanted to, to work together and not to implode, it needs to be, uh, it needs to be roughly, relatively homogenic. It needs to have a few set of rules that are exactly the same for everyone, a set of values that are exactly the same for everyone, and people agree together to follow. If you try to make networks that are too diverse, they stop being networks. They're just groups of people who have nothing in common. So the more stuff people have in common, the better for the network. So to summarize, a good network, one that can efficiently build trust between the members of it, is one where everyone feels at the same level. It's a peer network, not a hierarchical network. It's one where the goal is more long-term than short-term. We have a common vision that unites us, rather than we try to make quick, quick deals together. And finally, we have that common goal, meaning we're pretty homogenic at what we try to do, rather than just focus on the differences. It's more focusing on what brings us together than focusing on how diverse we are. And I want to give you a personal example of something which I managed to be involved in and had the privilege to be involved in, which, when you think back of it, at it, is pretty, is pretty uh, amazing. Ten years ago, a group of young business people in Poland contacted each other a bit randomly. They actually put little ads in business press saying that, that we're young, we started our businesses in, uh, after the system change, and we think we have, we have uh, mutual sort of experiences and observations we want to share. That was the only thing that brought us together. And it's, at first it was five people, then it was 10 people, then it was 20 people, then it was roughly 30 people who got together, all people who started their businesses in, in the, in the noughties, and, or the late 1990s actually, and managed to be quite successful at it, and wanted to share their experiences. And what happened is, despite the fact that we didn't know each other at all to start with, despite the fact that all of us were coming from different cities, different businesses, nothing to do with each other, we managed to sort of unite ourselves to create a platform where we would have these discussions every month about the challenges of business, meet with interesting people, have all that sharing. And uh, ultimately, what happened two years ago is Polska Rada Biznesu, which is the sort of most notorious, uh, prominent business association in Poland, which has the top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 20 businessmen in the country, asked us to merge because they were looking for a younger ingredient in their organization. And we ended up running Polska Rada Biznesu with four of us being on the seven people board. And if you look at it from a business perspective, you have a small startup company made by initially five people who don't know each other at all, who just decided to go for one goal together, who managed to build the trust around that and ended up taking over a much bigger organization in a fabulous M&A transaction. Now, the mergers worked for two years now, so hopefully it won't be one of the big merger blow-ups. It's not a very big merger, by the way. But it shows you how much you can, you can go if you manage to build trust between people based on a networking system, and a system that's relatively simple as long as you follow the rules I mentioned before. So really, uh, as I mentioned, trust is the foundation of any collaboration you might have, whether it be art, business, sports, whichever you mentioned today, or building a house for that matter. But to do that, you should follow certain, to build that trust efficiently, you should follow certain rules, and I encourage you to do so, especially through net networks such as TEDx or whichever else you might want to choose. Thank you. I've now forgotten what I was going to ask him. Isn't that great? <laughs> no, I haven't. I trust you haven't. No, I haven't. <laughs> now, um, Technology, of course, makes it possible for us to plug into all sorts of networks. Uh, and uh, in the context of what you were saying, it's 
interesting to consider how different networks work for different purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, you have networks for um, one kind of purpose, and you have uh, networks that concentrate on achieving a goal, such as what you've just described. Can you maybe um, talk about how um, different networks function in the context of um, you know, the purpose or the, or, or, or the goal, or maybe not having a goal immediately, but uh, possibly having a goal mm -hmm. uh, down, the, you know, down the line? Mm -hmm. Well, I think the key thing of any network is to have a goal. And when you look at the plenty networks we're all in, I think the ones we sort of fall off from are the ones where you, where you ultimately you don't find the goal or the necessary purpose. That's something I tried to touch upon when I said that they need to be homogenic. I'm not, I, I think you, know, you can have a million goals, whichever one you want, and with the technology today, you can actually be simultaneously in a million networks, but you'll still only stick to the ones that really cater for you, that have a specific, a specific goal. If you look at social networking sites, and I suppose a lot of us have migrated from one to the other, or from one to the other to another to another, and I don't want to mention names, but the ones that are working are the ones that are really fulfilling some certain needs. The ones where there was just a diversity, the ability to be connected to a lot of people, they tend to die relatively fast. And that's what I was trying to say today. Okay. Great. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.